In the last video, we discussed what is the GDP. What is the gross domestic product? And we said it's the value of all final goods and services produced within the United States. And in the last video, we discussed the difference between final goods, which are goods that are ultimately going to be consumed or used up typically by a consumer or by the government, versus an intermediate good, which an intermediate good is often used in businesses to produce other goods. So in this video, we are going to dive into the composition, the makeup, and the measurement of the GDP, of the United States GDP. And whenever we're looking at measuring GDP, we are looking at measuring it of one of two appro approaches. We are either going to use the expenditures approach, which measures the activity in the product market. Remember this product market up here, this aspect of goods flowing uh, to the government and the goods flowing to the households and in return you have these customer expenditures, the government expenditures and other business investment expenditures that are all kind of flowing in this direction and what it's doing under this expenditures approach is it's measuring this top half of this diagram and it's measuring how much money is being spent on final goods and services. The second approach is known as the income approach. So it measures the activity in the resource market. So if you remember the households, they provide the resources to the businesses and in return the businesses pay out this national income in terms of wage, rent, interest, and profits. Now this top half should match the bottom half in an ideal situation, theoretically, these two are going to match each other, the top half and the bottom half, so the income approach and the expenditures approach should equal each other in theory. In reality, we do have some discrepancies that allow them not to be 100% equal all the time. Uh, in theory, they should, but because we are dealing with international trade, things of that nature, sometimes these two approaches do not always equal each other but for theoretical aspects we're gonna say that they do they both they both have the same yield and same value of GDP they should equal each other but what we're going to focus on mainly is this expenditure approach and it's looking at how much are consumers paying for these final goods and final services so how is the GDP made up? What is this composition of the GDP? Well, we see that consumer expenditures, this the amount that the households are buying, makes up of 70% of the U.S. output. 70% of the goods and services that are produced here in the United States are ultimately consumed by the individual consumer. And of this 70%, we find that two-thirds of the value of that 70% of that US output is going towards services. So just stop and think about your own personal life. How much do you spend on a cell phone bill versus how much do you spend on food? How much do you spend on insurance versus how much do you spend uh, on tangible things like a car? Well, what we find is that the American population relies heavily on services and that two-thirds of that US output of that 70 percent of the US output is going to these services remember these services are not tangible goods these are uh, basically labor provided it's a service that is provided by another firm and it's not really a physical or tangible good but it is part of this gross domestic product that might be insurance that might be uh, financial services that might be something along the lines of um, your cell phone bill, your TV, your internet bill. All things of that nature are all considered services. We also find that we that gross domestic private or gross private domestic in investment makes up of 16.8 percent of the U.S. output in 2015. Well, what is this gross private domestic investment? That is investments into long-term uh, applications, or it might be for businesses. Businesses, whenever they are buying buildings and building buildings and buying equipment, 
That is known as that gross private domestic investment. Whenever it comes to the households, households buying new residents are considered this gross private domestic investment. Whenever it comes to businesses and households, it's what are they going to be buying for a long term, such as equipment is long term. New residences are considered long term investments and buildings are long term investments. So we find that this gross domestic private Gross private domestic investment in 2015 made up 16.8% of the U.S. output. Governmental expenditures. Now these governmental expenditures, this aspect of right here of how much the government is spending, we find that it on average usually makes up anywhere from 18 to 20% of the GDP. So the government, as much as the government can get a bad rap for being uh, in the budget deficit and usually spending more than they're making they do make up a large portion of this GDP the government alone governmental expenditures alone accounts for almost one half of the US GDP one half of all of the final goods and services not one half one fifth of the final goods and services being bought in the United States. They make up one fifth of the final goods and services bought within the United States. So they do contribute quite a bit with that one fifth. Now, another aspect is net exports. So with if we are a net exporter, then that actually increases our GDP. It shows that we are selling more than we are buying. If you remember, exports are the amount that we sell to other countries if the United States sells to other countries well if we are selling more final goods and services to other countries and, be, and being then we are buying and that makes us a net exporter then that actually increases our GDP but in reality the United States has been a net importer in recent years that net importer actually decreases our GDP because we are now buying more goods and services from other countries, final goods and services, than we are selling. So that actually will reduce our GDP. Now, whenever we discuss GDP, we can discuss in either terms of nominal GDP or real GDP. And if you remember, nominal means not adjusted for inflation. I know I wrote GDP here, but that should be inflation. So, nominal GDP is not adjusted for inflation. So it's the GDP in current dollars. We're going to be just looking at the raw numbers and we're going to be looking at, all right, here is how much it is in actual dollars. This is how many trillions of dollars of final goods and services we sold in the United States this year. And it is definitely not adjusted for inflation. Whereas real GDP, accounts for inflation. It is adjusted for inflation. And the way that you calculate the real GDP is you take the nominal GDP divided by the implicit GDP price deflator. Now this implicit GDP price deflator is a price index that represents a weighted average of all the prices of all goods and services captured in the GDP. So what it's doing is it's taking all the final goods and services captured in the GDP taking a weighted average of that and actually looking at that price and how much that price has changed over time and that's how you calculate or what how you were coming up with this implicit price deflator now whenever we're talking about GDP we focus on real GDP because nominal GDP can actually be misleading you see, in 1981, nominal GDP growth was actually 4.1%, but real GDP had actually declined by 1.9%. And if GDP is declining, that's actually indicating that we are in a recession. So yes, the amount of goods and services, the raw amount of goods and services that we were selling, it had actually increased. The value increased. But what had also happened is we were facing inflation at that time, and the prices were actually rising faster 
than what we were actually selling. So while it looked like we had a 4.1% growth in just sheer products being sold, in reality what was going on is the actual GDP, the amount of goods and services we were actually producing, had began to fall. But what was happening was just the sheer price due to inflation was increasing to the point where it caused nominal GDP to increase. But once we adjusted it for inflation, we saw that we were actually selling less goods in 1981 than we were in 1980. So we were actually in a recession at that time while the nominal GDP showed a growth. So if you ever hear on the news or anything like that where it says the economy grew by 2.2% this year, well, if they say something along that lines, what they're talking about is a percentage change in real GDP. It's saying that we sold 2.2% more in the value of products after being adjusted for inflation in this year than we did the last year, meaning that we are selling more products. In the sense, it means we're selling more products because we're adjusting for inflation using that real GDP.